From Central Point, Oregon, headquarters of Microbelm Software, this is Microbelm Live. Thank you so much for joining in on the conversation today. So, an interesting topic today, right? We're going to be talking about solid modeling. Actually, we're going to be showing you how to use these tools to build some pretty complicated things. Uh, and today we're going to be focusing on building a reception area. And so these tools are one of my favorite areas to uh, our uh, parts of our solution to showcase. Uh, because they're easy to use and they're fast and well, they're actually saving our customers, our users, a lot of time. Um, as much as 70% of their time is saved uh, compared to previous their previous processes. And that's a, a figure that uh, we've heard from a lot of our users, you know, ranging from 50% of their time savings to 70%. So it's, it's a lot of time savings and I'm hoping to be able to show that to you today. Uh, so remember, you can ask a question at any time uh, throughout this entire uh, webinar or the, uh, the episode here, and we're going to be uh, staying on a little bit later uh, afterwards as well to answer some of those questions that you may still have after we get done here. Um, so you can ask a question in the Q&A comments area, Q&A or the comments area, and we're also uh, on YouTube live stream right now, and so we're monitoring those uh, questions as well. So, what do I mean when I say solid modeling tools? Some of you probably already know what that means, um, but I like to think about it this way. In AutoCAD or Inventor or other solid modeling software that you may be using, you can create models, uh, objects that are parts or maybe even an entire product, and you can add subtractions to create the machining, but in many cases, you're left with just the model, um, a model that is made up of the parts or uh, parts that you maybe have to manual, op manually optimize, uh, maybe in a separate software, and then you have to think about assigning the tool paths. And so with each of those processes, there's, there's time involved with all of that. And so what we do is we help users to expedite that process. Uh, so providing the set of these tools, what we call our solid modeling tools, uh, to help automate the way that you build these products. Um, even automate the way that of optimizing. And so for you users out there who already are using Microbelm, you understand that process of how we can optimize and automatically assign the tool paths for things out of the uh, products out of your library. But in this case, we're actually automating the tool paths and all the assignments for um, parts that we're gonna build here out of just a, a model. So how do we do this? Well, that's what you're gonna learn today. And first, let's talk about the three features that make up our solid modeling tools. The first one, which is the pretty much where it all started, was uh, this with the solid model analyzer. And so this is more of the engine um, behind it all. Uh, so whether or not you, you use uh, AutoCAD or our solutions to create a solid model or you're importing something in like a DWG from Inventor or SolidWorks or something else, uh, this is the engine behind it all that's gonna be looking at all of the, the feature recognition, the looking at all, all the part sizes, all the holes, you know, should I use a router, should I use a drill, all that stuff, that's what the solid model analyzer is doing uh, for you. And then next we also have the extruded tools. And so this is uh, what we're gonna be focused on today, uh, using this tool to design and engineer products that can be extruded along a path, like a millwork wall or reception area, like we're gonna show you, banquet seating. And so you've seen some of the examples, hopefully by now, of things that we've been creating with that tool. So I'm excited to be able, to, again, to show you these uh, tools. Next, we have our custom tools. And so when we announced the, the first initial release of this, we called it our unique product builder. And so that's uh, changed a little bit. And we now refer to this as our custom tools. And so this is a tool palette that's, uh, or an area in the tool palette that allows you to build custom cabinet carcasses or unique products, things that are not found in your library. And so that, that's basically what makes up our solid modeling tools right now. And so, um, let's uh, get started. Let's switch over to Toolbox, and that's where all the action is going to be happening today. And we're going to get started in showing you how this all works. So let me minimize that. So what you see here is I'm in AutoCAD 2018 right now. I have a project open, and I have Toolbox. Um, you can dock this and move this panel anywhere you want. And so you users out there, you know this. But I like to maximize my drawing space, so I just let the let it uh, hide, and it uh, hides itself, and I can call on it whenever I need to. Uh, before I get started, though, I just want to, while I'm kind of setting this up, I'm going to come over here and launch a quick poll. I would like to see how many of you here today are actually using these tools. Um, so I'm going to launch this. Got a little error there. That's okay. Uh, so back to, back to what I was going to show you here in terms of setting up this environment. So here we have two viewports. We have our 3D model space and we also have what I've, I've switched over into a 2D view. And so this is something that you might see in a typical architectural setting uh, or uh, drawing received by an uh, from an architect or something. 
Uh, and this is also, you might have seen this if you're a user already, this is a template that we ship out with, um, with this tool uh, that allows you to pull from some of the things that we've been working with. And so whether they're submitted by one of our users, here's a nice uh, bar product that we can use, uh, some banquet seating area, column wraps, and this, is, this was a nice one from one of our customers that we created. A, uh, he was working on a, uh, a reception area that's a curved and multiple height. Um, so that was a nice one to get to work with. It's using dowels in this one, it looks like. Um, but what we are going to focus in on is down here, and I've worked on, I think there's about six of these different profiles or sections that we're going to be working on to build this. Um, and so let's uh, zoom in here because this will be the first one that we pay attention to, and we'll shrink that up a little bit. All right, so switching over here to our 3D space. Um, looks like our pole is working finally. That's weird. Um, all right, switching over here to our 3D space, you can see this is the model. So if you, when you registered uh, for this event today or this episode today, you saw that this was the product and um, that we are going to be working on today. So I wanted to make sure that you guys could see the final version, and, and I'm going to show you how we create that. So here's a nice x-ray view where you can get in and look at how all of that is working. All right, I like working in this other, this other view. There we go. So let's uh, move over into a fresh working area. And I would like to show you some of the basic principles behind this. It looks like we have uh, actually the majority of you here um, are still kind of getting started with this. So that's interesting to see a good percentage still use it and that's encouraging to see as well. But uh, I'll leave that poll going. It's really nice to see that. So you guys are that uh, have not seen these tools yet, uh, you'd like to learn more, pay attention right now because this is gonna teach you some of the principles of how this tool works. Fairly simple. Um, so I will try to move slow, but I'm going to start with, if you focus over here on the left-hand side of your screen, I'm gonna start with a simple rectangle. And so this rectangle, I'm gonna type D for dimension, and we'll make it a six by 40. And so this is, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. So this is something that you might see, maybe it's just a typical stud, um, and maybe in a, in a millwork wall, we're gonna actually need to run some wires through here. So we're gonna put a little hole here. And we'll also follow up with another um, rectangle. It'll be for another wire chase. Get this lined up, something like that. So the next thing we want to do is we've got to figure out what this is stud's going to sit in. So we're going to put a uh, another another rectangle here, and this time we're going to go six inches by three quarters. And so again, this is this may not be the way that you build this. Uh, maybe you have multiple. Um, you know, like a dual floor plate and a bottom plate and a double, you know, top plate maybe. But I think the principles here that I'm going to show you will show you how you can easily do that. And so in this example, our wall is made up of one bottom plate, one top, and a stud with some holes in it for some wire that would need to run through it. And that's as easy as we're going to go for right now. And so let me shrink this back up because now we've got to focus over here on the 3D space. And so what we want to do is uh, we're going to open up our solid modeling tools. And so there's a few different ways to access that. You can, I have a quick access tool button right here, or you can go down into our solid modeling tab and then open it up and you can see some of the other things that we have available to you there. But I'm gonna just let that thing launch and let's tuck it up and shrink it around. That looks good. So in this example, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create just a very simple wall. And so the first, one of the first things we need to do, or I guess this would be the second, is we wanna figure out what this is gonna, this path of this. Maybe this is coming from an architectural drawing, something that is specked out so you can see the curve of whatever you're trying to build or the angles or whatever it is. Maybe you can just copy that in and use that. That works out really well a lot of times. But in this case, I don't have that, so I'm going to just make a construction path that's very simple, six foot wall, six foot construction path. So now I can come over here and let me, before I just go ahead and jump right into it, let me just show you what this is. So this is our solid modeling palette. We have our tree view. Uh, for those of you who maybe it's been a while since you've seen this, this is a fairly recent change that we've done. We used to have an extruded product builder palette and a custom tools palette and it, what we decided to do is move those all into one. And so this tree view is where you're gonna see every type of product that you can make, whether it's a custom tool uh, product or an extruded product, they'll all live right here. Um, then we have our, our custom tools. Uh, this is a, an area that I, I, we're not going to go into today. Uh, we'll save that for one for another event or another episode. And 
this is an uh, this is a tool that allows you to build some you know fairly complicated uh, products things that are not in your library as I mentioned earlier uh, using some pretty simple tools and we'll get into that on another day but this area this area is where we're going to focus on this is our extruded tools and so we'll sh walk you through using a lot of these uh, options in here for working with the vertical entities and extruded entities so uh, what we want to do so let's go back to the tree view and we're going to right click to add so uh, what we can see here is we have the ability to name this. So let's just put it a simple wall. And the product type, we have a couple different options. We have the extruded products uh, starter that we have uh, selected first, and that's, that's what we're going to work on today. Uh, we can also have another option here to, uh, to resume an, exist or an existing se session. If you had drawn something previously and maybe you saved the drawing or maybe you sent it to a coworker for, for them to continue working on it, well this would be an option that would allow you to select the construction path and simply restore the entire model and you can continue working with it in the solid modeling palette using all those tools. So um, that's a nice option. And then everything else below are pretty much options for working within the custom tools. So we have making a product from the top profile of something, the side, the front, exist, and again from existing solids. So, we're going to skip that for now, and let's focus directly here on the extruded product starter. Let me look to make sure. I said I'd be monitoring questions. Let me make sure. Yep, we are getting to those questions. Perfect. Thanks, guys, who are helping out behind the scenes. All right, jumping back here. Where was I? So let's. Uh, we are done with this. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And next thing, it automatically asks us for us to select that construction path. So I'm just going to simply select it and we have the framework of what is going to make up this simple wall. So if I click the construction path, you can see that it highlights for us. There's nothing really inside of the extruded parts, vertical, supplemental. It's all empty right now, but that's about to change. Um, so let's go in and change it. So what we want to do is we're going to right click and add and we're going to come over here to our 2D and I could select in, an individual one if I wanted to, but that's kind of the slow way. I'm just going to highlight everything and it's smart enough to know what things are and it needs a little bit of help from you and this what you see now on your screen here this is our um, smart layer manager and so this is an area where you can create um, different different layers that you want to have set up a certain way and so these layers can be uh, for extruded entities like your plate something that's going to be extruded along or a vertical entity like a stud where it's going to look to spacing and different data options and other things um, so this is what ships out in the template, and this is the coloring and all the things that I have set up for my particular one. But uh, if you get this and you decide that you don't name things this way, you can easily create your own and save your template. Um, you can simply add and you can define what it is um, and how, how the whole thing is working. And so we'll get into more of these properties in just a moment, but let's go ahead and get back to what it was doing. You can see here that it found that um, something, right? It doesn't know what it is, and so it says, this part is six inches by 40 inches, what would you like it to be? And so I'm gonna say that is a stud. And so I'm gonna just double click. The next thing it finds is my top plate. And so I'm gonna choose, choose my top plate here. And the way I named these, this is, this is kind of like the way I like to do it because I can see here that this is a three quarter inch. If I were to select this one accidentally, where, where's my top, uh, top one inch, let's see here, there. So if I were to accidentally select the one inch one, well then I'm gonna get a warning and set, you know, it's gonna tell me that that's not you know, what you want because what was drawn is different than what was selected. So I just tend to name mine that way so it's, uh, I don't mess up. You can of course look at the material too, I suppose, but it's a double, double protection there for me. So I'll hit okay or double click and then just quickly down here, my floor bottom plate, I'll call it my bottom plate. And there we have it. Um, so that is a fairly simple process of creating the simple wall. But there's so much more that we need to talk about here to, for you to fully understand the principles of how this works. Uh, let me look here, I've got a question here. So Ivan's asking, when returning to the project, does the tree view always have to be restored via the extrusion path? Um, so yeah, I'll, Dominic, I'll go ahead and answer that one live. So yes, that is the way that you do it. So if for some reason, it's the end of the day, it's five o'clock and this is as far as you got, but you didn't want to lose your work and you closed everything down and you opened it up the next day and here you are with the solid model, but this tree view is all empty. Well, that's obviously a problem, but we overcome that simply by allowing you to create a product and choose the existing 
and you can select that construction path and everything is restored. Every, all the parts, all the changes, all your edits, everything is, is uh, right there ready for you to resume. So Ivan, I hope that answered your question there. So let me move back on to what I was working on. And I wanted to show you, right. So I wanted to show you some of the things that we can change. So let's first look at uh, one of the settings here that we have for our studs. You can see here that it's following some sort of uh, principle here. And it looks like I have it set at 16 inches on center. And so it's calculating from the start of the construction path and working its way down. And so you can see it's 16 and 16. And then finally it gets down here and you know, there's this weird gap. And so we have, an, we have some options for you here. So let's go into this, we're gonna edit this. And so we can see, up yep, my spacing is at 16. If I change this to 24 and hit okay, well, there it went to 24. I don't have to model it, I don't have to worry about anything, it just automatically changes, right? It's a simple property. All right, and we go back in here and edit this. And so we're, let's, we're gonna set this back to 16. But the other thing that we're gonna look at is a fairly new option here. And this was something that was requested by our users quite a bit. And that is just to have an equal distance. So it's gonna look at the construction path and figure out whatever that equal distance is, what it needs to be. And so I'm gonna set it to that and we can see what happens. And so now we have an equal spaced uh, uh, option here for, for these studs. And it listened and to those and that instructions and there we have it. So there's a couple other things that we can do in those properties, but we're gonna get into those when I start getting into how we're gonna build that reception area. So we'll save those just for a little bit. So let's now look back over here. Um, actually, you're gonna have to look at both areas because I want you to pay attention to some of the things that it's doing for us here. What we can do is, what if we get this and now all of a sudden we realize that things need to change? Well, I don't need to monkey with or play with any of these settings and figure out how to work with this solid. I'm still gonna look to the 2D. So that's where it gets its instructions for, from. And so I can do things like if I wanted to move this, so I can snap there and move that down. And now the 3D is gonna update for me. It's pretty simple. And what it did is it applied that same change over everything. There are ways to do, to get around, you know, having every one of them look the same and we're gonna get into that a little later. But right now what this is doing is it's using the same stud profile for everything. So there's other things that we can do, right? So we can, maybe this needs to be rounded so we don't have any sharp corners for wires to be caught on or something like that. Just like that. And if you were paying attention down here, you saw that those changes were made for us as well. So now let's, um, got kind of a problem here, right? These studs are not going to have any way to uh, be secured in here. I suppose you could staple this or screw that, but that's not what we want to do in this example. What we want to do is data that. And so if we went over here to our stud options, you can see that I do have uh, dados turned on. I in fact have a couple properties here. I have uh, use dados. I have uh, another thing that we're going to get into where I've got a joint type, you know, whether or not I need to put a double stud at the joint. And we'll talk about that a little later. Uh, so I have a bunch of different properties and this is already set up, but why don't I see them there? Well, because the 2D, remember it gets, remember it gets all the instruction from the 2D. So if I were to simply move this down, you can see that my data was created for me automatically because of the amount that this part is penetrating in. So whether or not that's the right way to do it to move that down depends on really what you're working with and the overall height that you need to work with because I can also extend that stud down into the bottom plate and it will also create that data for me. And the data is on every single one. And so another thing that's nice to see too, what if I were to put this back to not an equal distance but now a fixed distance and let's put this at 24 and we'll hit okay. You can see that those eight or those, some of these studs went away, but so did the machining. So that's the type of thing that this is doing by automating a lot of the modeling for you. You don't have to worry about, you know, removing that subtraction. It just takes care of it for you. So there's a couple other things. Let me put this back. Uh, let's put this back to, uh, we'll put this at an equal distance. Let's see, okay. There's a couple other things. Let's go over here. What else can we do with this? There we go. Um, what if we need to make this tapered? Well, let's pull this out six inches to see what happens. There we go. Every part is tapered and we'll maybe move this out six inches as well. And so you can see all those parts are impacted just from modifying this 2D. So I think you're getting the point uh, about how this works. Um, 
but the nice thing about this is, is that it's very dynamic. Uh, let's say that you had, uh, you know, this was the wall that you're building and you go out for site inspection and it turns out that this thing is actually longer. Uh, it needs to grow by, let's say, you know, maybe they came back and it was 36 inches off. So I just now modify my uh, construction path and it, the instructions were listened to and my stud principle of equal spacing was uh, listened to. And so you can see it's exactly what I wanted. Um, but what it did do is it kind of exposed something right here that uh, maybe now is a good time. I was going to save this for later, but um, it created a joint here. And it's kind of a weird spot for one. And maybe this is too long, right? Maybe this is not going to fit in the elevator. Um, not going to fit in the elevator, so you want to break that. Um, I have another question from Ivan. I, guys, I can probably go ahead and answer that one. I'm just going to pause on what I was just talking about just for a minute. Um, to show Ivan how to do that. So he wants to know, how do you increase the dado so that the, the parts fit a little bit looser? So I didn't really go into that. Um, so you can see down here, I have a little bit of a width gap here. And so that's a, an option that we can look at. So I have a stop dado gap and a stop uh, width gap. And so by changing these, you can see that we'll be able to change the spacing there so those studs can fit a little bit looser. And these are just the defaults that come this way uh, when we ship this out, but you can set this to whatever you want. So hopefully, Ivan, that answers your question. Keep those questions coming. You're, you guys are making for a lively discussion here for us. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel there. All right, what was I talking about? Right, so we have this, uh, this we have a weird um, joint there talking about maybe we need to fit this into an elevator. Maybe we need to uh, think about how this is going to get broken up, and that's obviously not how we want it to be broken up. So what can we do? Well. Uh, let's go over into our extruded tools and there's a couple things that we can do. So here's some of the options for our extruded entities and this is an extruded entity here. And so I can use this option here to simply click two parts and what it does is it merges them together. So now we have no more joint. I think we still have, might have a joint down here. I guess we don't on that one. So it merges them together. But what if now uh, what I want to do is I want to think about where this needs to be broken to split it up into two. Well, that's a, there's an easy way to do that. And this, was, this highlights really well when there's lots of parts like skins and other things that it's going to be impacting. But I can just simply insert one and I'll select all of the parts and I'll go ahead and pick a point here uh, on the construction path and you can see what it does. Is it created that joint for me? Now it created it over two parts. But still, that, that's really not the way that it needs to be held together. We have this part that's flapping in the wind, sort of. And so we can go back to our options here. And you can see that a double stud at joint is selected. So it's why is that not showing up? You might be wondering. Well, that's because over here, it needs to know what part to associate it with. And so in this example, I have a few things, only two things. Uh, so I'm just going to associate it to my top plate. So now what happens is it creates my, looks like I have some overlap, but I'll show you how to get rid of that. Uh, it, did it listen to it and I have two studs there at the um, kind of got competing uh, instructions but it's got a uh, two studs to shore up that uh, seam there and so yeah it is listening to the other instruction about the uh, the distance between but that's okay I can come in here and remove that part out of there so that's a vertical entity and I can select it yes I want it to go away and the machining went away everything's gone and now I have the single rule that's being followed with my double stud there. And I have two separate things that I can load up in the elevator and do whatever I need to. So anyways, I think I'm, I spent a little bit more time on this than I wanted to, uh, but I think that uh, shows you a lot of the principles behind how the basics of this work. Um, so let me get into uh, something a little more complicated. So I'm gonna do a little bit of house cleaning. I'm gonna remove this one. Yes, I want it gone. And we'll delete this as well. Okay. So let's get back into here. And we have a different job to do now. We have to work on creating this. Um, something that we can actually send for manufacturing and take a look to see how it's going to build all of that. So for those of you who followed me on LinkedIn, I made a post recently about a, how long something like this might take people. You know, I had some comments, 16 hours, four days, you know. 
uh, a lot of varying um, reasons as to why it might take longer than uh, others. Uh, a lot of them had to deal with multiple processes for tool pathing, for optimizing, for modeling, and then there's other things for documenting, right? A big part of this is documenting this, showing the guys how in the shop how to put it together. And so a lot of these things we're gonna be able to take care of for you. And uh, let me just get right into it so you can fully understand what I'm talking about. So here's another workspace that I've defined for myself. I'm gonna get started. So the first thing, guys, that we need to do is start the construction path. And for this one, I believe I set it up at 90. And we'll make a little 18 inch run this way as well. And we'll convert this to an arc. That works out for me. Let me orbit this around. Hold on guys, uh, there's a question coming in. I wanted to highlight one of them, it's from Bill. He says, in the, mic in the regular microvellum, I'm not able to offset the tools like I can on other software. Is it the same here? Well, you might have to elaborate more on that, Bill, uh, and perhaps, Dominic, you can engage Bill there with a little bit of conversation uh, on that one. I think we need a little bit more inf info from you, Bill, on that one. All right, back to what I was working on. I'm going to go and finish this out. And you might be wondering why I'm creating so many different construction paths. Well, I'll explain that in just a moment. Okay, this corner is at 40 by 40, and this one... I believe it was 60 by 60. That works out. So you can see here I have a couple different construction paths. Uh, and the reason for that is that there's a couple different heights here. If everything was the same height, well, I wouldn't have to worry about that and I can just use the same uh, section. But since it's different, uh, that's the way that it works. And so what I've done here in this drawing, you can see that these things align exactly uh, my countertops are the same height. My holes for the machining or for the wire chases are exactly the same height. My countertops, when you look at them, they're exactly the same height. That way, when you see this, they mar marry up just right as you'd expect. So that's why we have four construction paths. So let's go back here. We're going to add one, and we're going to call this, let's call this our front counter. That works out. And we're going to add some parts. And this section, or this part, the front counter, uses the taller section. And there it is. And I'm going to switch over just because I like the way that this looks. I'm going to switch over to that view so you can see what's happening. There we go. Now let's create some more. Let's see. Let's call this a transaction one. That works. And we'll add parts to it. And this time we're going to select from the shorter section. And we'll continue on. We just have two more to add. We'll call this the corner. Kind of select the construction path first, getting ahead of myself. And that one is using the tall. And lastly, we'll create the, the other one that I'll call a transaction two. That works out. And we'll add the shorter section. And there we go. So, that is, well, that's not all there is to it, but that is a, the way that you go ahead and uh, model that out. It's not exactly done yet. There's some things, as you can see here, in the insides of this that we're gonna have to work on. There's some corner properties that are probably not the way that we need to, uh, how these need to be to actually manufacture this. So let's, we're, next we're gonna go into how we edit that. So let me, uh, do a little bit of house cleaning again. This will just take a couple moments here. So we'll go ahead and turn off the extruded parts all but the plates on all of these. So we'll turn that off and turn these on. There, there we have it. 
And so now we're looking at the framing. We're looking at the insides of this. And so you might be highlighting or, or noticing some of the things that need to change um, pretty quick on this. Um, one of these might be this corner. This is probably not the way that uh, you would want to ship this out. Maybe we want uh, maybe we want two two studs here on the corners here to maybe drill or glue or apply that panel on the outside to. Uh, and then the other thing we need to look at is how are we going to join these? You know, we're going to screw it to the floor maybe, but we want these things to be joined here. So we're going to look at how we can modify some of that. So let's focus on this area right here first. So to do that, let me queue things up over here. I have two more sections that I'm going to reference. And we're going to go to the extruded tools. And this time we're going to cho choose this option here for selecting an alternate profile. So I'm going to do that. And we'll select the 3D first and then the 2D. So in this case, the only thing that's really different between this stud and the other one, the other profile, is that I have these holes. And so this could be, there could be many different ways that you can uh, think about this, whether maybe this part of the, the wall, it needs a tapered stud. Maybe it needs a little bit thinner or thicker material. Well, using this alternate profile and the layering system that we have set up, you can, you can make that part be anything that you want it to be, pretty much. But in this case, I just needed some, some bolt holes so let's go ahead and do the rest here. Remember, you gotta select that 3D first, and then the 2D. And you can see here that uh, my machining is exactly where I want it to be. So just a few more edits here, um, and we'll move on to the next part. So remember, 3D, 2D. And I think we have one more, yep. All right, there we have it. Now we can properly screw these things together, bolt them together. Again, this might not be how you um, set these up or how you would do it, but in this example, that's how I've chosen to do it. Let me look at these questions and make sure we have these uh, being answered. All right, we've got a nice question from Paul. Uh, Dominic, I think I'm going to let you answer that one um, behind the scenes there in the chat. If you need me to highlight that one, just let me know. He had a question about, uh, can you have the stud set to drill out, out the corners where the countertop meets the stud instead of routing it? And I think, I mean, there's a couple different ways that you can do that. Um, I think what you're talking about is here. I could be wrong, but again, that's why I'm going to have Dominic uh, help you with that question. Um, but there's other things that we can do when we start working on the skins and the, the countertops themselves. Remember, this is solid modeling, uh, and there's things that you can do with just normal modeling tools. Like maybe you want to create some dog bones so that you can put those uh, adjustments in or those uh, fasteners for your countertops, well, you could simply create a subtraction. And when we analyze that, we're going to pocket that out as we need to. Um, so that's just a part of using um, modeling tools in AutoCAD. All right. Uh, let's see. What was the next step I needed to do? Let's focus now on the corners. That's right. So this corners, the, way, the reason why I did this is, is because of the way that it's listening to the instructions for how to lay these out. And so that's just as it was putting these out along the path, that's how it figured it out. Um, but that's not how we want it. So what we can do is we can edit this. So we're going to first use this option to rotate this around and we're going to choose a negative 90. And then we got to move that into place. And then we have another edit to make here. Again, negative 90. And we'll move that one into place. There we go. But if we are trying to uh, screw that material in using this uh, as a stud to screw to, might have a little bit of a problem here. So let's look at these other ones that I have set up. These have actually no machining. And so I think this is the shorter, yep, that's the shorter section. So I'm going to this time select both of them. That is an option that you can do. Uh, you can select multiple parts to save a little bit of time. So in this case, I am gonna select both of those. 
and now the machining's gone. So now we have a flatter surface uh, without any holes in it uh, to secure that material to, if that's how you are building it. So one other change to do over here, and I'm gonna follow the kind of the same, a little bit of the same process, mostly. And I'll move that into place. And we have another change to make. And finally, we'll just get that guy into place. And you're gonna notice a little bit of a problem, a little void, I guess, and we'll fix that. Yeah, so what you can see, because I moved that around, maybe the gap in here is too wide. Maybe you want more of a support right here, and so I'll show you how to fix that in just a moment. Let me just go ahead and get rid of the machining on both of these. There, that works out just like we want now. Yeah, so maybe we, uh, maybe in doing that and moving those parts around, this is too wide. So we have another option here to copy. So get things orbited around. I'm trying to move slow sometimes, I pan quite a bit, so I'll try to minimize that so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, we're gonna use this option to pan, and so, or excuse me, to copy. And so we're gonna select a base point, and let's just move it over, I don't know, what do you say? Um, maybe 12 inches. And so there, maybe that worked out just like we want to uh, maybe provide a little bit more support there for that corner. And we can do the same thing with this one. Snap there and then move that one over 12 inches as well. Now that's a really beefy corner. All right, so I think that's about all the editing that I'm gonna do on the insides of this right now. Oh wait, no there's not. Um, there's one other thing that I forgot to do and that is to fix this. We already learned how to do this um, in the intro introduction part of this. But let me, I have to fix that. So um, let's see here, what do we do? Oh yeah, we go back and we have a lot of parts here, don't we? We have so many parts, maybe I don't even know what that part is. Well, if you guys who are using this tool don't, have, don't use this option here, the locator, I suggest you do, it really saves a lot of time. So I can simply select that, find it, and it looks like I was already close enough, but it found the individual child part within the parent of the entire extrusion. So there's the entire extrusion, and so you can see here, in this case, I selected the specific segment, and it found what that was. And But what I wanna do is I'm going to, um, actually, I selected the wrong part, guys. Um, that was a good example of locating the part, but what I actually wanted to do was find this. There we go, <laughs> that's the right one. Because what we actually have to do is we have to look at my double stud at joint options. Um, and so you can see here, zero, zero parts are selected. I have a few more options this time, and as I select through here, it's going to highlight some of the parts. Well, some of them I have turned off, you can't see them, but that's the part that I want, my top plate. So I'm gonna hit okay, and okay once more. And now I have my double, double studs right there, right where I wanted, and it's going to listen to that instruction for everything. So I also have one over here. So I think now I'm done. I think I may have to do that one more time up here. Let me locate that stud, go to the parent level, and we will select my top plate for that as well. There, that works out, perfect. So the next thing we're gonna move on to is we're gonna look at some of the exterior things. We have, we turned off all the exterior parts, but now it's time to start looking at those because we need to work on the finishing parts. So I'm gonna turn things back on, and so I can just simply double click this a few times, and everything comes back. Let's see, what am I missing? Oh, here we go. Turn that on. All right, so we're getting closer. Uh, to what we started with from the beginning there, what I showed you, but there's some other things that we need to look at. And I can see, I'm gonna switch over here. If you guys don't use these, those who may be new users, there's lots of people here that I think uh, don't even use our software yet. These options here, 
uh, for switching between different views are really handy. I like looking at this x-ray mode. You can kind of see in. It looks really great. You can helps you um, as you're working with the product. But sometimes I like to work in this mode here because I like to work from the solid view so I can really see what is going on. So in this case, we're going to be looking at the countertop here. And I can see, looks like I already made the edit or the change that I was wanting to show you the solution for. So I'm going to go ahead and break this and then fix it again for you. So in order to do that, I'm going to find this part. There it is. So that's my countertop that is on that corner. So I'm going to edit that. And so we have a couple options here that we can look at for this extrusion. We, uh, we can see that it's uh, looking like that we have our max linear extrusion length set at 95 and a half inches. And so we can set that maybe, maybe there's a specific material that we know that we never want it to go greater than 60 inches, or maybe we want to automatically break things uh, into specific segments. Well, controlling that and setting that max linear length to something that uh, would follow that type of thinking, well, then you can just change that number right there and it should work for you just fine. Um, but what I want to show you is this other option here, and this is the extrusion corner negotiation type. So right now, we have it set to a distance from corner, but we have a couple options in here for you. We have a butt before corner and a butt joint after, a miter, and right now we are set on the distance from corner. But let's see what happens when I change that to a butt before corner and hit OK. The part's going to redraw for us, and you can see that we have that joint like we'd expect uh, right there. But maybe in this case, that's not what you want. Maybe you want something different. Um, maybe you want to miter that. Maybe that's how you build these. And so we can miter that, and we create the miter for you just like that. So one of the options I was going to show you um, that we have has to do with my uh, distance from quarter. So before, as I was working on the preparation for this, this option was set at 40. And so let me show you what I got. So you can see we have this weird little piece that is not how we want to ship this out, right? That would be so annoying to have to have that. So that's not what we wanted. So we have a couple of different ways that we can adjust that. And so you saw from the uh, earlier when I was working on that simple wall, if you remember, we had the option there to um, get rid of the joint. And so that's in our extrusion options. And I can just simply click this option here and it fuses these parts together just like that. And that's kind of a manual you know, process. You got to watch for that if you wanted to see that. But that's probably, uh, there's a better way. And that's how it was when I actually fixed it from before or adjusted it is I just set this out just a little longer for this particular one. Um, and so now that's going to automatically uh, make sure that we don't have that type of joint there. So anyways, that's good to know. So some of the next things that we need to look at, uh, and maybe that option, by the way, might be something you want to use here. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to leave that. So let's look at how you can use some other things in AutoCAD. Um, and what I'm about to show you is just a uh, built-in AutoCAD function. This is not a microvellum function. In fact, what I'm going to create is not even in any microvellum part uh, yet. So this is, I'm just entering into the modeling uh, tools. So I'm going to come out one inch and I'm going to come down, I believe that's 10 inches. And so what I've created real quick is a one inch part that I'm going to assign some material to and it's going to be a, you know, included in this model. But really quick was where I was able to just model up a, a simple part. So I just chose one inch that could have been whatever you wanted it to be. And now I can actually just use some copy tools. Um, actually, I needed that one more time. Let's move that out a ways. And so what I can do is maybe I'll do a 3D rotate and we'll rotate that around, something like that. This one has to be rotated too. There. And then I can move this into place. And these are, these are things that I'm going to just call in a minute my end caps here. And I'm going to move that one into place as well. There. So let's, uh, and we're going to, we're going to turn those into some, uh, what we call supplemental parts in just a moment, but let's, um, let's look and see what this is going to look like. That doesn't look too good. Our countertops kind of just hanging short just a little bit. Well, we're going to adjust that too. Back into the extruded tools. We have an option here for, um, what we call stretch and lock the extruded entity. 
And this is going to engage the press pull command in AutoCAD, but what it's also going to do is it's going to communicate the new stretch length, you know, the property, the value that we change. It's going to com uh, communicate that back into the solid modeling tool so that we retain it because sometimes if you don't lock it, that's why we have this option here for locking. Maybe you use press pull by itself, but uh, we have the, the automated way to lock it, stretch it and lock. And so sometimes if you don't do that and you redraw the product, well, things will just snap back to what they were. And so now we have this nice little option where we protect ourselves against that. So I can bring this edge out. Maybe I want it to overhang three inches. And we have a couple more changes to make. We'll just stretch this guy out as well. Say three inches. Maybe that's giving us an overhang that we want. And we can also do that a couple more times. We'll come out three inches. And, oh, that's right. I probably need to model those other parts, but you know what? I am going to cheat a little bit, guys. I'm going to copy these. Copy this one. And I'm going to bring it back over here. And I can see right away that I do have a little bit of a height issue for it to match up with what I've been doing over here with this uh, three inch overhang. And so I'm gonna just go in here and engage the tools for just editing that. So watch this, I can come down one inch, pretty easy. And then again, I'll stretch this out. And I think it would be three inches. There we go. So uh, again, this may not be how you might build this. I mean, you may want to build some kind of part that hides that, but again, you can just use some solid modeling tools to quickly model something up that you can then uh, add as a supplemental part. Uh, and I think I have one more thing to add here before I show you that process of adding the supplemental part. So I'm just gonna save a little bit of time, copy this. We're getting close to the hour, and so you're probably wondering when I'm gonna get to the manufacturing part, aren't you? Well, we're gonna get there. We're gonna show you how, uh, what the nests look like in that process. So there we have it. That is close. That is actually the exact copy of what we started out with. Um, but we do need to add these supplemental parts so that our uh, product is aware of them, right? Right now it's just totally not. These are just nothing entities right now. So we can do that. We're gonna start with, um, let's uh, minimize up just a little bit. Let's start with this corner since we're zoomed into that piece. So I'm gonna right click and add my first supplemental part that I will call an end cap. And I can change the material out here if I wanted, but, and it's, you know, this is not gonna be plywood in the real world, but in this demo, I'll just leave it at that, that's fine. And guys, if you have been uh, using this, what you just noticed here was a new feature. Um, if you've used that option before to add these, um, supplemental parts, you had to engage that command multiple times. Um, but now we can just simply repeat the command without having to push the button again. And so that works out for us. I have a couple more changes to make. So I'm gonna get into adding those. And so that's on my transaction one. Looks like I forgot to move those parts over. That's okay. I think for the sake of time, I'm gonna, you guys get the idea how we can uh, move those parts over, that would be you know, included in there. The same way, the same process that I'm going through right now. And so um, I can just add a couple more here. Let me just add this transaction area too. Going to select that one, Call that my end cap. Oh, and then we're gonna go ahead and hit enter. And then I got two, I have two parts here on my front counter. So for those of you with your stopwatches out who are trying to see if my comments on LinkedIn were accurate or not, um, you might have to excuse that one. I could continue on, but I think you get the idea. It doesn't take much time at all. So I'm gonna add these two parts. This is the end cap. And enter, there we go. All right, so there's our supplemental parts. You can see those turn on and off. These are included now in that product here in this uh, solid modeling palette. So that works out. And so we are to the point now where I'm gonna call this done. I'm gonna say that we are ready to send this over for manufacturing. 
Um, so before this uh, started, in fact, probably about a 30 minutes before this started, what I did is I ran through this and made sure that everything was gonna work out just right for me. And the processing time for this took about 93 seconds. So we analyzed this whole thing and it took about 93 seconds to get to the point to where uh, we can have our G code, our nesting and all that, all that information. Um, but before I get to that point, I just realized something I missed. Um, there are two different ways that we can do this, that we can get this into uh, a nest, you know, to where we automate the tool pathing and create all of that, those parts and patterns for you. Um, but I think you first need to really realize how this works over here. So we have created four different products. So we have the ability to save each one of them and then we can save it back to the project or we can draw it. Well, if I drew each one of these, I'd have to make sure that I'm snapping into the right spot to where um, I end up with something that looks exactly like this. Well, I can do that, um, but that's not uh, what I would recommend because what I would recommend is doing this option here to where you engage our solid modeling analyzer. And in doing that, what you're able to do is analyze the entire uh, product and turn that into a microbound product and then it's just one and all those parts are kind of merged into the same base, base product. Um, but let me just show you real fast, uh, because uh, it's about six minutes out, um, I'm gonna show you the nesting and all of that data behind that one, but what I wanna do is I'm gonna do something that I didn't quite plan for, but let me just do it anyways. I'm gonna add another one, and I'm gonna call this a short wall. And well, I broke my rule number one, didn't I? Gonna have a polyline first, guys. So we're gonna do 72 inches. Now we're gonna add, and we're gonna call this a short wall. And now I'm gonna add some parts, and we're gonna use exactly what we used before uh, for in the, in the reception area. But only now it's just a something smaller. Um, oh, there we go. Mouse disappeared for a moment. So there's all the parts you can see in, inside there. That's exactly the same type of uh, machining that the other one, the other product was working on with. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna show you how to right click on this. Let me zoom out just a little bit so you can see the, how it works. And I'm going to save. And so what this is doing um, is it's, well, I couldn't even tell you what it was doing before it was done. Well, what it did was it analyzed all the parts, uh, looked at all the holes, looked at and gathered the tooling that was required to, um, to apply to that um, operation. And now it's asking me whether or not, what do I wanna do with this? I can save it to my library. Maybe this is something I'm gonna build commonly. Um, maybe it's not, but if it isn't, then what you can simply do is save it to the project and then we can process it out. Maybe you don't even care to, re to draw it as a microfilm product to see it here in 3D, but I do. So I'm going to do that and now draw it. And what you'll see here is a fully uh, functional microvellum product. We have all the information as far as the material, the part sizes, the tooling information, the tokens for all the machining, everything is there. I can draw a part in 2D and see all the machining if I wanted to. Uh, but the other thing I can do is uh, come back over here and I'm gonna make a work order. So just to recap, just so you understand exactly what I did, I know you probably already do. Simple construction path, and a lot of, and I used this uh, section to create a simple wall, analyzed it, created a, a microvellum product out of it, and now I'm about to create a work order for it. And so I can do that just by simply selecting that option. I'll hit enter, and it found it here. This is my short wall. Um, you can see that I did that earlier as well, but this is my short wall that I'm gonna process. So I'll go ahead and process that. And this is going to be opening up our um, processing center, and yes, I want to open this up. So this is our processing center, and um, for the sake of uh, many, many users, uh, our people that are on this uh, episode tuning in today that um, are unfamiliar maybe with how this works, maybe you don't have our software yet, um, what this is, is our control center, well, our processing center that it's called, but it's really the control center where you actually go in and start figuring out where your parts need to go. Uh, next week in our live episode, we're gonna be talking about uh, the difference between uh, cell-based manufacturing and nested-based manufacturing, but what this does 
is it allows you to have the best of both worlds because maybe you have cabinet parts, you know, base cabinets, upper cabinets, you know, whatever square parts. Maybe you have uh, a point to point and a saw set up to where you're going to route parts, uh, not route, but make sure that those parts go to those machining centers. And then maybe parts like what we're working with, with uh, the extruded product builder, maybe you want to send those to your nested base machine. Maybe you have that type of setup. Well, this is the area that you'd be able to do that. And so here in my sample setup here, I have four different uh, processing stations. Um, so here I have a point to point type to, uh, connection, a nesting machine. And then we have uh, our new uh, IPP type tool file um, that I'm going to use. And so this is an internal based uh, tool file that's going to allow for maximum speed. I mean, I, I, the testing uh, had to have been at least 70% faster. Um, I used that number many times, but I, I really do think that it was about that fast, maybe 60 to 70% faster. But let me just go ahead and quit explaining it and I'm just going to do it. <laughs> so we're going to select all my parts and I'm going to um, apply that processing station to everything and I'm going to let it process. And so it's writing all the G code right now. Um, and getting all the nest patterns all figured out. And in just a few minutes, there it is, it's done already. And so now we can look and see what it did. So I'm gonna open up the drawing and we're gonna be going to B1. And here's my composite drawing where they're all in the same drawing. And so there are all the parts, everything that I need to actually build this. And I didn't have to assign one tool path. Um, it's all here, we even are pocketing out a few things. Um, because we don't, you know, we don't want this hockey puck here flying across your, your shop as you cut this out. We're actually going to be smart about it and turn these things to dust. Um, and so there's, anyways, that's all the parts that make up that simple wall. But let's uh, now show you just real quick. I'm going to go ahead and open up. I got to think. I got to close this out. Close that, and I'm going to show you the results of what it looks like when we did that same process for this. So let's get into that and we're going to go into that work order. We're going to edit an existing one and I believe it was, I believe it was this one. And so there are all the parts that make up uh, that reception area. You can see that's my product, my reception area, my countertop build up all the different parts. And so I can, I can, we can sit here and wait for, you know, a couple 93 seconds or less. I think it was less actually this morning. Anyways, we can wait or I can just show you what happened. Uh, and so here's the results of that. So I'm going to open up this and go into the composite drawing and you can see here are the parts all laid out for us in the true shape nest uh, fashion that we would need. You can see there's our corner. Uh, you can see there how we're turning that in one to dust there. Uh, applying all that tool pathing for you. So um, anyways, that is uh, what it looks like. So anyways, let me get back to some of these questions. Let me see if there's any. I think, uh, I think we've done a good job there and got to most of those questions. Um, but there you have it. That is, uh, that is as easy as it is to do that, uh, to create some pretty complicated things uh, in a really short amount of time. I don't know if it was exactly 30 minutes uh, or, or 15 minutes uh, in the creation process of that, but I, th I think you would agree that um, it's a pretty, uh, pretty a good amount of time savings there. Uh, right about now, you're probably wondering, you know, thinking about that project that you worked on last week, or maybe you're even uh, thinking about the projects that you're about to take on, or maybe that you can take on by having these types of tools. And you might be wondering, well, am I really going to save 70%? Is it more like 50% or what is actually my savings? Well, what I suggest you do is you reach out to us after this, uh, the conclusion of this episode today and uh, let us uh, have the opportunity to demonstrate for you using products that you're manufacturing to show you um, for yourself so that you can experience the difference of this type of solution for you. So if you're an existing user, I definitely encourage that you keep using this. We've been seeing a lot of amazing examples come through, and I was trying to get a, one of our customers to get on uh, today to, to, to talk to you about some of the things that he's been building, but it didn't work out. We'll have to save that one for our next, uh, our next uh, ep episode where we talk about this. Um, but anyways, if you are an existing user already, I encourage you to keep on using it and keep telling us your experiences. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can always send us an email. You can always send us an email at live at microvellum.com 
and we could uh, collect that feedback from you there. So again, that was, uh, that was the steps that we went through there to create this, uh, this model or this uh, reception area. I think today uh, there's lots of questions coming in. In fact, there still is questions coming in. And as I mentioned, we're going to stay on to answer a lot of these. We want to make sure it's very important to us in these episodes that we get all your questions answered. So we'll stay on uh, for a little bit longer just to make sure that uh, we do answer those questions. There's, a, there's Actually, speaking of questions, there's something from a question from Kevin. Uh, and it's perfect. That's a couldn't have timed it better, Kevin, your, your question. So he says, are, there in, are any of these tools available in our premium tier? So for those of you who don't, who don't know, we sell our solutions in kind of a tier-based uh, model. And so we have a basic, a plus level, uh, professional, premium tier, and then we have enterprise. And so what you see here in the solid modeling tools, if you're an enterprise user, well, then you have all of these tools. Um, and previously, our solid model analyzer, that was also available in our enterprise tier. But what we've done recently is we have exposed that into the premium tier. So if you are a premium tier user, you have the ability to work with a solid model. You can import the solids, you can create them in AutoCAD and simply analyze it and do pretty much what you saw me do at the tail end when I was analyzing uh, those, uh, those products. Those are, that is something that you have the ability to do. Uh, and then there, you know, if you wanted to talk about the enterprise level, well then that's when you get all these other tools for the extrusions and the smart layer manager and all these other things that you saw in, primarily here in this uh, episode today. So hopefully, Kevin, that answered that question for you. All right, I think, uh, oh, here's another one um, from Bill. Bill is asking, "What I have Toolbox 7, uh, is that correct? Well, I'm not sure about that, Bill. We can check in with you afterwards, send us a, an email, and we can help you figure that out. But these tools that I'm showing you, that I've shown you today, are available in our version 15.5 and greater. Um, so if you don't have that version, well, um, I suggest you, you get updated and so you can take full advantage of these, uh, these time-saving tools. All right, so let me just check to make sure that we are on track here. I think we've answered all those questions and uh, looks like my polling actually worked a little bit earlier. We had uh, good, good, good polling there on those of you who are using these tools already and those who aren't. So what you should see right now is our performance survey, and we like to make sure that we are always doing our best to deliver these episodes in a way that uh, is best received by you. So if you can go ahead and let us know how we did, we'd certainly appreciate it. And as always, if you have a suggestion for a future live event or live episode, please let us know. We are looking forward to hearing from you. You can always email us at live at microvellum.com. And if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, you can uh, please do that as well if you want to get notified of when we stream live there as well. So on behalf of our entire team, and those helping out behind the scenes, um, we thank you for tuning in today, and we will talk with you again next week uh, on our next Microbelm Live episode.